it became frantic in 1992. It, be it became an obsession and a uh, no holds barred assault on whatever it took to attain tax exempt status for Scientology. Ah. So David Miscavige and Marty Rathbun literally walked down to 1111 Constitution Avenue, walked into the IRS building and said, hi, I want to meet with the IRS commissioner. It's reported that David Miscavige asked if we turn off the faucet of all of this Freedom magazines investigating, exposing ads in USA Today. At, like, it was a major campaign. Can you resolve our issues? And Fred Goldberg said, yes. And ultimately, the deal was done. So this guy didn't... Is, is that true? Is that the reason the deal was done? Was because they turned off all of the the Freedom Magazine ads, all the pressure that they had. Is that what made Fred Goldberg say the deal is done on Scientology tax exemption? No. Let's backtrack here a little bit and go as far as where Mike Rinder says, yeah, it's going to start at 10.07 and it's going to end at 11.20. Got it. And that, that'll be everything that I need to comment on. All right. I want to continue the fight because if, if they, you know, there's... There's documents that say we do not find this organization to be fitting the criteria for tax exempt status. And then all of a sudden, the guy signs off on it. Yeah. What is so insane is that. So, what they're presenting here is that basically Scientology blackmailed, they pressured them to give them tax exempt status. The things that Rinder lists there, specifically Freedom Magazines, investigating, exposing ads in USA Today, all of those things are legal. Anybody can do any of those things. You can publish magazines, you can investigate, you can hire investigators, you can expose wrongdoings, you can put ads in USA Today. But what you cannot lawfully do is lie to the federal government, lie to the IRS, submit false statements to the IRS to get tax exemption. That's the key. And that is what Rinder has omitted. He has never caught to. And that is what he can come clean on. He doesn't have to come clean on all of those things which are lawful. Marty Rathbun reports that if that Goldberg, when they finally met, said, can Miscavige make all this go away? Rathbun said, like a faucet, that Miscavige can turn it all off, that Miscavige has absolute control of the organization. It is somewhat important that this is all blamed on Fred Goldberg. However, Fred Goldberg was out of office and was replaced when Clinton became the president at the beginning of, I guess, 92, or maybe it was 93. The beginning of 90, he, he would have come into office in, in nine, January of 93. Right. Yeah. And I'll try to find this, but I've read an article which stated that this procedure, which Fred Goldberg initiated, bogged down. And then when his replacement, which was a Clinton appointee, Margaret Richardson. She's the one who signed off. The key point is when Leo Remini says the guy signs off on it, no, he did not. Margaret Richardson signed off on it. And another factor was they got rid of all of the IRS agents who were very familiar with Scientology and replaced them with agents Yes, and gave the tax exemption uh, to Scientology without any examination or by requiring that the Scientologists file these false statements because the false statements are, I believe, what were necessary to give the IRS the excuse that they needed to give this organization tax exemption, which the IRS knew they did not deserve. Scientology was making false statements to the IRS that the IRS, the FBI, 
Justice Department and probably the whole of the U.S. intelligence community, they knew were lies. That's where the key is. And that's what Rinder will not come clean about. And Miss Remini appears to be ignorant about or duped about. All right. Well, let me ask you this. It seems to me that if they used blackmail, actual blackmail, to get people to decide that they wanted to give tax exemption to Scientology, that would be one thing. But if they lied in their submission, then that would be a way to undo the tax exemption, to prove that their submissions were filled with lies. Is that correct? Absolutely, that's correct. That's illegal. Just imagine a key point is the IRS, the FBI, they knew these were lies. There's no doubt about it. I had been interviewed by the IRS. I had been interviewed by the FBI. They knew that I was not psychotic. That they knew that my mind was not a sadomasochistic nightmare, sordid yeah. sadomasochistic nightmare. They knew that I was not what the Scientologists were saying in their submissions. That's just that's just me, and that's only a part of the lies that they told about me. They told lies about my attorney, Mike Flynn. They told lies about other litigants. They told all kinds of lies about their history. And yes, it does unravel the tax exemption. However, the IRS, etc., knowing that these were lies, then entered into a conspiracy with the Scientologists. That also is unlawful. That's a crime. And it is that conspiracy which is holding the IRS tax exemption in place. It is not that the IRS agents were being stalked or surveilled or, you know, articles were being written about them. That's bogus. And it seems to me that that's Mike Render's tactic here. He wants everybody to be up in arms about the blackmail that Scientology placed on the IRS in order to gain tax exemption, when it's actually their own submissions, their own filings were filled with false statements that can be proven false in a court of law. And that's what Mike Rinder is protecting, that vulnerability to their tax exemption, he seems to be distracting everyone away from that, that he doesn't want them to know that you can go into court, prove that these are lies, and nullify the tax exemption. Yes. And on the other hand, just consider that if you get tax exemption from the IRS and benefits, protection, and promotion from the IRS and from the U.S. federal government for filing lies. Everyone should do it. Everyone should have that facility. Everyone should write. <laughs> that's, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's, that's a crime. They've committed crimes in order to get this billions and billions of dollars coming to them through tax exemption. Not only billions of dollars, but freedom to harass, freedom to silence people, freedom to freedom to destroy their lives. Also, very importantly, a lot of this has to do with deductions. And all those rich Scientologists and all their celebrities all got to take immense deductions by their church committing crimes. So it benefits every Scientologist around the world and it acts to the detriment of citizens everywhere. And not just the U.S. and the poor taxpayers, but they, they go around the world with their IRS tax exemption. And they claim that the IRS did the biggest analysis of a million pages of documents, hogwash. The key state are the lies that they told. And, and, so, that's, and, and we've discussed before, they were throwing up obstacles to Scientology's tax exemption based on their behavior against you and other people using fair game. And in order for them to overcome those obstacles, they just had to lie about you and say that you were crazy. Right. And, yeah. and somehow yeah. that was accepted. That ad hom argument was accepted legally. Well, you see, you know, the risibility of 
of it. It's actually, it's actually mad. There is within Rinder's submission, it says that the service, the Internal Revenue Service, mm -hmm. has continuously thrown the Armstrong case at Scientology, demanding an explanation. The only explanation they gave was Armstrong psychotic. Yes. You, you had um, these nightmarish tendencies in your mind. You're just seeing things, right? You were just seeing things. And that was the argument they presented to the IRS to overcome this obstacle to tax exemption. Jerry's crazy. Right. That's it. And to the benefit of all the billionaire Scientologists, it, yes. their tax deductions depend on Jerry Armstrong being crazy. Yes. Okay, and so that is the legal vulnerability that Mike Rinder is distracting away from. Exactly. You, you have the legal standing to go into court and prove these were lies in their submissions. And in submitting these false <laughs> statements, it proves that the tax exemption should be, be annulled. Right. What they stated about me is defamation per se. You can't you know, if you and I are talking and we say, oh, Joe Blow is crazy, that's one thing. But putting it in submission to the IRS, to the federal government, to federal agencies, that's a, another thing. Plus, the malice is proven by the fact that they got tax exemption by stating it. The Correct. tax exemption proves the malice of Scientology. What is actually required is a very smart, courageous lawyer who's willing to take on the IRS or U U.S., the federal government, and Scientology at the same time. They are co-defendants because there is a conspiracy between them to the detriment of taxpayers, citizens, victims, and the world. Yes. This is going to require a very smart, very courageous lawyer. Well, all right. That seems like it should be what we need for this particular video. There'll be other videos coming up, but this, these are kind of the basics, right? Of the yeah. whole ta tax exemption situation. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, let's end this here. Super. Okay.